Welcome back to Game Changers, the show that celebrates individuals making a difference in their fields. I am your host, Zechi Adjugo, and today we have an incredible guest with us who has made waves in both the music and cryptocurrency industry. He started his early life as a rapper, but now he's known as Bitcoin Chief. Mr. Gaius Chibweze is a Miami-based Nigerian crypto cryptocurrency influencer, real estate investor, and CEO of Abit Mobile Applications Limited. From sleeping on the bare floor while waiting to audition for the Calabar Carnival performance to being awarded the most popular Nigerian on social media, the Bitcoin chief has an inspiring story of hard work and perseverance. He's also created his own cryptocurrency coin and raised $1.2 million in pre-sale. He has also written books, Two books to be precise, How Bitcoin Changed My Life and Get Rich of the Net, both of which has sold over 5,000 copies on Amazon. He's currently empowering African youth with blockchain and crypto powered solutions through his tech organization, as well as up investing in upcoming artists through his record label, Coinvest Music. So get ready to be inspired as we dive into the life of Bitcoin Chief on Game Changers. That being said, welcome to welcome to Game Changers, Mr. Gaius, or should I call you Bitcoin Chief? How are you doing? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so How much. You? Uh, You're know. looking very amazing. You're looking very fresh. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm always I'm always indoors. Maybe that's why. Avi. <laughs> and the weather here in Miami. So let's... How is the weather? Awesome. Awesome. Miami has one of the best weather in the United States. I understand it's raining over here, so oh, I think I, I should also say the weather is awesome here too. <laughs> Thanks for that warm introduction. So let's. Oh, thank you so much, sir. So let's get um, into what we have uh, to do today. So over five hundred thousand people on social media know you as Bitcoin Chief. But I want to know, who is Mr. Gaius Chibweze? How did an Enugu boy get so recognized globally in the cryptocurrency world? Can you walk me through that journey, please? Okay, so thank you, uh, thank you. so much to the viewers and also uh, the Crypt TV team. Uh, my birth name is Gaius Chibweze Ngene. I'm actually yes. from Enugu State. Um, but I was born and raised in Cross River State. So I was shuttling my my younger years, I was shuttling between Enugu and Cross River. So uh, I'm from Enugu South, local government, up in um in Enugu South. So in Okanano. So well, I started my life like every other young Nigerian, born into a family that uh we we just had enough to eat for a night and that was it so my father was a businessman that left enugu state to cross river state to do his business and met with my mother there and they fell in love got married and they had my elder brother <laughs> and they had my elder brother and had me um, unfortunately my elder brother died two years later the same year i was born so oh, I'm so sorry. So I was raised in Cross River State. I even went, I even went to school in, in Calabar. I graduated from Calabar. Then I then then I relocated to Abuja, where I lived until I moved to France and from France to France to the United Kingdom, and now to the United States. So I started. I went to school like every other young Nigerian. I after finishing school uh, i got involved in tech but as a digital marketer so i have always been in fact sales is my number one thing i've always been a salesman sales is something i i find so intriguing something i love doing so i got involved with digital marketing and from digital marketing i get in, i got involved with network marketing which is mlm so a guy, an American guy that I used to follow then was the one that told me about uh, Bitcoin. As at this point of my life, I was working as a senior special advisor on new media to a senator in the National Assembly in Abuja. So okay. I worked in the National Assembly in Abuja for four years before I resigned in 2016 to travel uh, abroad in 2017. 
So I was the senior special advisor on new media to the Senate chairman on committee of finance. So I got involved with Bitcoin through a guy on Facebook. So there's this guy who was like one of the top leaders in the company I used to do business with then. It was a network marketing company. So one day I noticed this guy stopped talking about that company and he was not talking about Bitcoin. So I asked him, I said, bro, what's going on? You're no longer talking about uh, Organo Gold, which is the company I knew you with. And the guy said um, that, yeah, that he's not talking about that he found something better. I said, wow, can you tell me more about this thing that is better than this company that has paid us thousands or thereabout? And he told me it's Bitcoin. So he sent me a YouTube video. This was in 2011. I was in Abuja then. He sent me a YouTube video. And when watching that video, what really caught my attention was when the guy who did that video said Bitcoin had gone from $2 to $5. And he said so many things, but the one that really caught my attention was when he said there was going to be just 21 million Bitcoin. And before Bitcoin, I had played around a couple of digital assets then. I remember I bought something before called uh, eGold. So when I, when I saw that there was just going to be only 21 million Bitcoin, I told myself that I had to be among those who were going to hold at least one of these. So I bought yeah. my first Bitcoin. I bought like 11 Bitcoin then. It was selling for $35. So after buying that Bitcoin, I continued going for my work in the National Assembly. And also after when I when I closed from work at the National Assembly, I come to Wuse Market. So my my brother, who is who is not only really my biological brother, but an Enugu State brother too, who was allowing me to stay by the side of his uh, shop to sell phones then at Wuse Market in Abuja. So when I close from work, I come down there and I hustle in the market. So I had just bought this yeah. Bitcoin and I just kept it there like that. And yeah, that was how my whole story uh, with uh, Bitcoin started, just like you asked. That's, that's why people later came to know me as the Bitcoin chief. So my, my name was not really the Bitcoin chief at first. So here's what Okay. Um, there was a time probably you must have heard about this. Many, many persons watching this probably may have heard about me, but they, they, they may not know it's me. There was a time in 2016, I said I wanted to be the first person in the history of the world to meet all my 5,000 Facebook friends in real life. So I did something called the Mr. Facebook World Tour, which was going to see me be the first person in the history of the world that has met in real life all his friends on Facebook. If you put my name and put Mr. Facebook Walter, you will read about this message on BBC and Linda KG, all these top blocks, all they carried it then. So okay. they were just calling me the okay. connector. So yeah. So it was So you've you've always been this ambitious, def Mr. Um Gaius. Definitely, definitely. I've always been onto one thing or the other. Yes, that that's amazing. I love that. I mean, it's written all over you. Okay. <laughs> so you know. Um, your reputation in cryptocurrency precedes you both um, locally and internationally. But I mean, come on, as a rapper, I need to know how you transition from music into cryptocurrency because for a very long time you were known as so so, so, -so flow, flow, yeah. Which after this interview, I'm going to drop a beat that you're going to do. You're going to drop some <laughs> flow for me. That, but that will be after the interview. So I want to know how you made that transition and how was it like for you? So while in Calabar, in Cross River State, I had always had this love for music. So I met, uh, I met this cool dude who is my best friend. Uh, his name is Blinks Breezy. He was a rapper. Yeah. And while in school, he yeah. formed a group in college. In college. So I was just like yeah. doing music for the love I had for it. I brought people together and we formed this crew and we released a couple of songs. One of our, our popular songs then, was known as Chelsea Swag. I even came to Enugu. I don't know if those guys are still there, but there used to be some hot guys then in Enugu called Eskima. One guy and his brother then like that. So I was doing music. I even when I when I moved to live with my auntie in MNA, I remember the money I came with from Cross River, I put that money all into music. And my auntie was 
very mad with me. So I've always had love for music. I've always had yeah. love for music. So I was a performer then in Cross River State. I moved to Abuja. I pursued music through a little bit, but I saw that I saw that um, based on my situation as at that time, my situation would not really give me the give me the opportunity to go far in music. So that was when I decided to focus on getting digital skills. Instead, I started a record label called Converse Music to okay. instead support other artists who were doing it full time. While I can also uh, face my hustle and then come into music as an executive. Yeah, this, that that will, will get to that um, part of your venture yeah. very soon. <laughs> So that, that's amazing. You know, remember what I told you that after the end of this interview, you're going to drop some flows for me. I want to know you as so so flow. Yeah. Okay. So that means it was not easy for you to give up music and just, but it's okay. You're still in the music industry, even though you're not singing, perfect. which is perfect. perfect. Yes. But in that aspect of your life, in getting to where you are now, obviously, every Every great person has come across obstacles. Every great person has faced challenges yeah. and failures. I want to know, what was your greatest challenge and failure, and how did you overcome it? Well, a couple of them, as um, someone born into a struggling family, definitely, you, you definitely have lots of challenges. You understand? My, uh, yes. my come-up story was not really easy. But I've always been ambitious. I remember then in Abuja, I remember then I, I did a song and I was taking that CD all around Abuja looking for someone to sponsor my music. I was thinking it, it was that easy. <laughs> I'm so sorry for laughing, but I can just imagine you. But go on, sir. I was just going around. I would tell people, bro, I want you to buy my CD. Buy my yeah, CD. It wasn't even really buy my CD. I would come and introduce myself. My name is Gaius Chibuze, aka Soto Flow. I'm a young artist. I see a promising future in this. I just released this demo. I would like you to take a listen up on this. I just need money for promotions. And you know, in those days, it was it was a lot of promotion. And you, and you have to pay to promote. Not like today that you can just yeah. upload your song on Apple Music yes. and the rest of them. So then it was paid to promote. So I was just coming with all that. So it wasn't really easy. Then also with my family too, I came from a family where we were also struggling. Fine, yeah. everything was not available, but we had at least the little to survive. You understand? So I wouldn't really come and sit down here and say, oh, I really went through so much like that. Everything I went through in life, and God has always, I think there has always been something special about me. I have always said, God has always amplified my effort. You understand? Mm. So, so, so I went through struggle, but it wasn't as bad as some people's own. It wasn't as, you understand? So I came yes. from a family where we had nothing and nothing was there, but almost everything I did, God had always amplified it. You understand? How I, how I went to school, how I moved to Abuja, how I even left Nigeria. So I've always had that life advantage so i don't know maybe it's a god factor hallelujah <laughs> but it, but it wasn't really rosy you understand yes. but i wouldn't say it wasn't as challenging as most people's story but even as um as it was god does not give you what you cannot handle you kept on pushing you were perseverant Perfect. You just kept Perfect. On pushing. Pushing. i give you i give you an example so in 2009, after my graduation from the, from the university, so I have my elder brother from my mom's side, and I came back and I told him, I said, I would love to work in the National Assembly Abuja. And my elder brother told me, please, I should forget about this. Who do I have in the National Assembly? Blah, blah, blah. So he said, I should come instead, let him look for a waiter job for me. Yeah. What did I do? I told him, I said, I won't do a waiter job. Instead, I sat down and I wrote a letter. In that letter, I wrote 150 reasons why you need an SA on new media. I wrote that letter to all the senators and House of Reps in the National Assembly. 
Then I locked myself up in the house for six months. I was reading a book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Then I was listening to an audio called The Law of Success 2 by Napoleon Hill. So I was going through that phase with belief. So I wrote that letter to all these senators and House of Reps. A few of them contacted me until one invited me for a presentation. Now, and he now said I should meet his, his, his then PA. And from there, through that, he, his PA, Mr. Nice Ayuk, my whole life changed when I was employed to work. So it hasn't really been too rosy, but I have always aimed high. And then I have always either hit that sky or fall on the stars. Okay. Mm. That's amazing. That's amazing. So with this whole aiming high, with the whole aiming high, I would want to say your ventures, your ventures, your yeah. um, label. That's the right word. Coinvest Music. Tat coin, which has made $1.2 million in pre-sale, and your company, Abit Mobile Applications. How did you feel when you saw all these milestones coming to life? All your ideas coming to life? I feel I felt I feel and I felt so so I felt so happy. And I still feel so happy when I see my dreams coming true. And this has always been my case. I'm a very strong believer. Like my faith yes. is like, like if you have met three people who have faith, just put me in your number one. I can tell you, I can sit down today and, and tell you, just give me time. I'm going to be the governor of Enugu State. What is just going to take this time? I can tell you, I want to become the president of America. The only thing is going to take me is time. But I know how to position myself. You understand? So. Yes. Some of my goals, like that coin in 2017, after the first Bitcoin boom, I saw the way people were creating projects. And most of these projects were like foreign based white people creating this project. And I told myself, I said, I'm going to create my own cryptocurrency. So in 2018, I gave it a name. 2019, I launched that cryptocurrency only on my Instagram. I didn't, I even had less than 200,000 followers then. Only on my Instagram, yeah. I raised 1.4 million dollars cash before the coin even went on exchange. You understand? And even when I launched it on exchange, it did, it did very well. But as you know, crypto is up and down. So yeah, that was just one of my dreams. My producer then, who was like the biggest artist in Cross River State when I was an upcoming artist, I told him then in school, I said, one day I am going to sign you. And guess what? Six years later, I signed him to my record label and I've invested over 200 million Naira in him. So I have always set crazy big goals and I achieved them. So I feel like there is if you are ready, to, as far as there is dreams and you're ready to dream it and you're ready to work for it, there's not, there's no impossibility, especially with me. Oh, my, the inspiration. <laughs> it's amazing. So speaking of um, you raising $1.4 million cash, how did you get people to trust you? Well, with the dealing on cryptocurrency because you know nigerian boy the whole stereotype around that so how did you gain people's trust i get you. especially globally so funny majority of my investors uh after, after after nigerians majority of my investors are indians so okay so and thanks to god i have been able to travel up to 26 countries of the world i've held events in 13 of those countries so I had built a great network. And there is something called proof of work. There's something called proof of okay. work. When people say that, when people see that you have been consistent on something and you have built some form of credibility, people will always trust you with their resources. I posted something on my Instagram stories yesterday. I said, get your first success. When you get your first success, your second success is definite. If when you get your first success, you will also succeed. I, I give an example. I said, I can post on my Instagram now that I need 100 people to put 1, 1 million Naira down for any project and people will do it. Why? I have built something called social proof. 
I have do something called social proof. Most of my followers yeah. who have followed me for the last six years, they have seen that I am not a double razzler, which means I have not done Bitcoin today and tomorrow I'm going to do Forex. I've not. Okay. So I've been consistent. So I've built that social proof. I've built some level of success. So when I was raising this money, it was even just, it was, I just made one post and that very day I had raised up to $7,000. I said, wow, so this thing is going to work. I, I, I designed a website. In fact, I raised 100 million naira before my website was even ready. You understand? There was even a day I, I, I did an experiment. There was even a day I did an experiment on my web on on my WhatsApp when I was still on WhatsApp in 2019. I said I'm going to raise 30 million naira in less than 30 minutes, and I did it. So I have, I built, clap. I have built that social proof and some form of credibility. When I started yes. this, when I started the crypto something, I am the first person that said. People should learn to trade by themselves. People should not give money to people to trade for them. So I have okay. always removed myself from anything that can like can, that can spoil my name. You understand? So I've, I've yes, sir. some form of credibility. Okay. Okay. So um, lastly, um, I want to know. I want to know your advice to people that want to start um, investing in cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin with how the market is today how would you walk them through it what would be your advice and also when you finish answering that question i want to know what is in store in the future for you yeah. um bitcoin chief what is in store for you yeah so first for people who for people who want to get into crypto first thing i want to advise you listening to me right now is get the crypto knowledge cryptocurrency is very profitable but it's also very risky while I can come sit down here and say I have made millions of dollars, crypto has changed my life. There is someone somewhere now that is crying right now, doesn't have what to eat. Crypto has ruined his or her life. So get the education, understand the risk involved. Also, don't invest your survival money. Because okay. don't invest your house rent. Don't invest money that you will need in the next six months or one year. You understand? Yeah. In as much as crypto, yeah, because people finish, always say, uh -huh. okay, in as much as you know, people always say, invest your spare money, exactly. you spare money. In as much as crypto can change your life, it can also ruin your life. It has ruined a lot of people's life. But one of the things is to really benefit from crypto, you must think long term. When I bought my Bitcoin, I always tell young people, I say, don't look at my life, my lifestyle, and think you can become me overnight. When I bought my Bitcoin, I was working. So it wasn't my survival money. I was sure of the next meal coming in the next month. So I tell young people that instead, go get a skill, learn a hand work, get a skill, and then invest in crypto as an investor, not as a gambler. A gambler is the person yes. that puts $1 today thinking he's going to wake up tomorrow morning with a million. And if that doesn't happen, the person becomes frustrated. So I didn't invest through that way. I was working. I had a business. In fact, I, there was a time I opened a barbing salon, a unisex barbing salon. So I didn't invest in crypto struggling. So I always tell people, get a skill, get skill, get a skill. And with your skill, you can now get into crypto as an investor. You think like an investor. I have a couple of properties okay. in Enugu State. Some of them, I have been waiting for them to appreciate in value. You see why? I'm an investor. I wasn't buying some yes. of the properties thinking I'm going to get, get up tomorrow morning and those properties will now be, be 100 million percent in profit. So think like an investor. Yes. That's why you must get something yeah. reliable. Then also learn how yeah. to do it by yourself. Don't listen to people who come to you and promise you, oh, they are going to invest for you and the next morning you're going to wake up a millionaire if it was like that definitely yeah. everybody will be rich you understand yeah. so that is my so what is for people watching this okay mm. okay so what is in store for you what does the future hold well i'm currently moving away i'm i'm currently uh moving to social good i'm moving into uh the face of my life where i call 
the legacy phase. God has blessed me tremendously. I've traveled to in six countries of the world, have assets worth over $20 million. I've done a couple of things and had quite some success in my business, invested in real estate. I'm currently building a resort in Rwanda. But right now, I feel the time has come when personally I'm moving to social wealth, social good. So I'm currently building my company, which is um, uh, East Side Ventures, because I'm a proponent that Igbos should invest in Igbo land. So I have, while having a couple of investment in Igbo land, I am championing a course right now called Ndibo Awake Initiative uh, using my media company, Voice of the East. And in the next 10 years, you're going to be seeing me more of, with, in more of this direction because money is, money is no longer my problem right now. So what I want to really go into right now is to change the life of young people from my state and from Igbo land and also invest more in Igbo land. I'm currently building a resort called Ohaneze Land Resort in Enugu State. I'm about to start a project called Igbo Tech City on a 20 hectare, on a 24 hectares of land. So all these are some of the things I am currently doing at hand. As I'm talking to you right now, my, my team, they are chatting me up in Enugu now, where I am setting Voice of the East Radio and TV. So, so, okay. so I'm opening up my media house in Enugu State, where I come from. So it's going to be a lot. Okay. Uh, moving forward is more of this social. Uh, yeah. It's more of this passion project. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow! Amazing! Amazing! I'm pretty sure I was inspired, like very, very inspired, and I'm still holding you for my rap. I'm <laughs> yeah, going to be, be, be getting your words. Drop, drop the beat, and I'm going to kill it. Also, that never dies. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay. So let me should I drop the beat now? Wait, let me let me just let let's let me just round up and I will drop the beat to yeah, once I'm done rounding up. I did for you, I did for you. <laughs> okay. So well folks, um, this is a wrap on another episode of Game Changers. I hope you had a blast. You enjoyed yourself, right? I hope you had a blast. Sure they did. <laughs> Okay, so we have come to the end of another wonderful episode of Game Changers. We hope you had a nice time listening to the inspiring story of our guest, the one and only Bitcoin chief. I am so happy that he was on this show. So from sleeping on the floors to creating his own cryptocurrency and investing in budding artists, Gaius has truly shown us what it takes to be a game changer. And with all those juicy antidotes of his early rap battles, which we are going to see very soon, I'm pretty sure that we are going to be entertained. So please, guys, keep hustling, keep on dreaming big, and don't forget to tune in next time for more exciting interviews with our movers and shakers of our time. This is Uzechi Adugo signing off and wishing you a very great day ahead. And always remember, you too can be a game changer. You too can change the game. All right, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you guys next time. But before we go, I am about to drop that beat. <laughs> so this is me dropping the beat. Hey, no worry. Don't even think. I'll see you. Okay, so. I'll see you behind okay, the so behind this stage. Should I give you words? Should I give you words or should I drop beats? Which drop beats, drop beats. I'm not a poet. Okay, I should drop beats. Okay, all right, let's go. Don't give me words. Keke, dushke, dushke, keke, dushke. Are you doing? You're cooking the beat with your mouth. <laughs> I, don't know, okay. I, the I thought you were going to drop an instrumental. Ah, uh -uh, no. I cannot play instrumental. I'm a performing now. artist. I need instrumental. Go and get ah, yourself okay. ready. Don't worry. Bring don't worry. Me. I will get myself ready. I will get myself Go ready. Go get, myself Go ready. get yourself ready. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sir. Thank yeah, you so much for being on the show. All right, now. Thank Bye, you. guys. Yeah.